Assalamu alaikum students, I am Vaseem Ikram. This is the 14th lecture in a series of 45 lectures on digital logic design. I hope you are well. Uh, last lecture mein humne combinational logic pe baat shuru ki thi, but humne dekha tha kaise aap combinational circuits bana sakte hain usmein. Aaj mazeed us pe baat karenge, uh, but before we start with combinational uh, logic, let us quickly revise the topics which we did in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we started our discussion by looking at the quinn mccluskey method. We in fact used the method to simplify the expression representing the odd prime number generator circuit. Uh, the number of variables in that particular circuit were, uh, if you remember, 5. So, we could not use the Karnoff map, therefore quinn mccluskey method was used. The next topic which we discussed was the implementation of combinational logic. Basically, you combine different gates to form a circuit, which is uh, known as a combinational logic circuit. Uh, we mentioned that the combinational logic circuit is based on two forms of Boolean expressions, sum of product form and the product of sum form. So, basically the, the combination logic circuit which you would implement, it would of course be based on either the sum of product form or the product of sum form. The circuit which would be required would be a combination of OR AND gates or AND OR gates. We also talked about the steps which are required to implement a circuit. So, we mentioned that first of all you have to come up with the function table or the tooth table of the circuit. जो भी आप सर्किट बनाना चाह रहे हैं उसका पहले फंक्शन आप होना चाहिए डिफाइन होना चाहिए सो फंक्शन कैसे डिफाइन करेंगे यू नीड टू हैव अ ट्रू टेबल सारे इनपुट्स लिखेंगे सारे आउटपुट्स लिखेंगे उसके बाद यू कैन डायरेक्टली इंप्लीमेंट द सर्किट बाय लुकिंग एट द मेन टर्म्स और द मैक्स टर्म्स बट द सर्किट इफ वी व्हिच वी ऑब्टेन बाय डायरेक्टली इंप्लीमेंटिंग इट फ्रॉम द फंक्शन टेबल वुड बी क्वाइट लार्ज इट वुड बी यूजिंग टू मेनी गेट्स so, उसके डिसएडवांटेजेस थे हमने कहा था कि भी पावर ज्यादा रिक्वायर करेगा उसका साइज बढ़ जाएगा गेट्स बढ़ जाएंगे कॉस्ट बढ़ जाएगी सो द अप्रोप्रिएट स्टेप वुड बी टू सिंपलीफाई द एक्सप्रेशंस यू हैव द फंक्शन टेबल यू यूज द कार्नोफ मैप या कोई मैक्लस्की मेथड यूज करें अगर वेरिएबल्स ज्यादा हैं यू कम अप विद अ सिंपल एक्सप्रेशन एक्सप्रेशन किसी फॉर्म में भी हो सकती है सम ऑफ प्रोडक्ट फॉर्म में हो सकती है प्रोडक्ट ऑफ सम फॉर्म में हो सकती है उसके बाद क्या करेंगे यू कैन डायरेक्टली इंप्लीमेंट द एक्सप्रेशंस यूजिंग लॉजिक गेट्स so you would have a simpler circuit which of course works humne alternate implementations bhi dekhi thi if you have a circuit you can implement the same circuit using all nand gates or all nor gates so ye circuits bhi bilkul kaam karte hain usme then we uh, did an example adjacent ones uh, jo circuit tha uski humne example ki thi usko implement kiya tha sum of product form ke surat mein bhi aur product of some form ke surat mein. Dono type ke jo circuits the, they work perfectly well. Now to have a look at the operation of any circuit, basically we use the timing diagrams. So, humne adjacent ones ka detector circuit jo tha, uske operation ko dekhne ke liye, we uh, drew some timing diagrams, just mein input supply kar rahe the, output dekh rahe the. So, you can of course use timing diagram to view the operation of any logic circuit. Then we talked about active high or active low outputs, active high and active low inputs. Conventionally up till now we have been saying that uh, the output of a circuit, any logic circuit is 0. Whenever the output is active, the output is set to 1. Similarly, the inputs, the active inputs are treated as 1s, uh, inactive inputs are treated as zeros. Well, this is not the case. You could have a logic circuit which could have an active output determined by a logic 0 value or logic low. So, it could have active low output. Similarly, it could have an active low input. The last topic which we discussed in the uh, last lecture was uh, implementing a circuit for a odd parity generator. So, odd parity generator such discussion start just to uh, remind you what an odd parity generator is. Basically, uh, when you send or transmit data from one end to the other end, there are chances that some bits get corrupted. So, you use a parity bit to determine an error or detect an error. So, this example we will use 4 bit data. 
सो फोर बेट डाटा में अगर कोई एरर आ जाए कैसे डिटरमिन करेंगे वी वुड अपेंड ए पैरिटी बेट हम और पैरिटी बेट अपेंड करेंगे सो हाउ वुड यू अपेंड द पैरिटी बेट बेसिकली वो वन होना चाहिए वैल्यू या जीरो होनी चाहिए बेसिकली यू वुड हैव टू डिज़ाइन अ सर्किट विच लुक्स एट द फोर बेट्स ऑफ द डेटा वैल्यू एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स इट डिटर्मिनस इफ द पैरिटी शुड बी वन और जीरो once you determine the parity bit you just combine it or connect it or append it to the four bit data and send the five bit information to the other end so pichli dafa humne baat ki thi ke jo odd parity generator circuit hai uske liye pehla function diagram banayenge aur uske baad phir expressions likhenge aur phir ultimately circuit ko implement karenge so let us have a look at the different steps the function table represents the 16 possible combinations of four data bits the four data bits are represented by variables d3 d2 d1 and d0 the output p represents the state of the parity bit since odd parity is being used therefore the four bit data and the parity bit should add up to give odd numbers of ones the function table shows the parity bit set to 1 when the 16 four bit data input combinations have no ones or an even number of ones the information in the function table is mapped directly to a four variable karnoff map to simplify the boolean expression represented by the odd parity generator function none of the ones mapped in the karnoff map are adjacent to each other thus the function mapped to the karnoff map cannot be simplified however using the rules of boolean algebra applying de morgan's theorem and knowing the function table of exclusive or and exclusive nor gates the boolean expression can be simplified let's have a look at the simplification of the boolean expression representing the odd parity function the expression for the sake of simplification is represented in terms of variables a b c and d instead of d3 d2 d1 and d0 uh, and d0 respectively the expression can be rewritten in terms of common product terms a bar b bar a bar b a b and a b bar and some product terms and some of product terms c bar d bar plus c d and c bar d plus c d bar the expression can be further represented in terms of sum of product terms as c bar d bar plus c d a bar b bar plus ab c bar d plus c d bar and a bar b plus ab bar the four sum of product terms represent c exclusive nor d a exclusive nor b c exclusive or d and a exclusive or b the expression if seen in terms of x and y simplifies to a exclusive or b exclusive nord with c exclusive or d thus the original 8 min term expression is implemented using two exclusive or and a single exclusive nor gate as shown in the diagram now let us have a look at the timing timing diagram of the odd parity generator circuit and let's see if it verifies the operation of the odd parity generator circuit the a b c and d timing diagrams represent the changing four bit data values during time interval t0 the four bit data value is 0000 during time interval t1 the data value changes to 0001 similarly during time intervals t2 t3 t4 up to t8 the data values changed to 0010 0011 0100 0100 and 1000 respectively during interval t0 the output of the two exclusive or gates is 00 therefore the output of the exclusive nor gate is 1 at interval t1 the outputs of the two exclusive or gates is 10 therefore the output of the exclusive nor gate is 0 the output p can similarly be traced for intervals t2 to t8 if you compare the timing diagram p for intervals t0 to t8 with the values of p in the function table you would find that they are similar they are in fact identical so this verifies that the uh, odd parity generator circuit is working
We have looked at the operation of uh, the odd parity generator circuit. In fact, uh, we verified its operation by using the timing diagram. Uh, to implement the odd parity generator circuit, we have used exclusive OR gates and exclusive NOR gates. Basically, if you do not use these exclusive OR and exclusive NOR gates, then you can still implement the circuit using a combination of AND gates, OR gates and inverters. But exclusive OR gates and exclusive NOR gates reduce the size of the circuit, they simplify the circuit. So what in fact are the exclusive OR gates and exclusive NOR gates? Basically, they are functional gates, these gates perform a function. What is the function? Let us discuss that. Exclusive OR gate basically uh, detects dissimilar inputs. So let us suppose you have a two input exclusive OR gate, you have the combination 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Now for the combinations 0, 1 and 1, 0, the outputs are 1 and 1. For the combinations 0, 0 and 1, 1, the outputs are 0. So basically, jab bhi input, dono input different honge, the output is 1. Exclusive NOR gate ko agar dekhe, wo bhi char input combinations hai. Exclusive NOR ke case mein, jab combination, input combination 0, 0 or 1, 1 hai, the output is 1. So basically, exclusive NOR detects similar inputs. Now, how would you implement this function? Basically, exclusive OR ko dekhe or exclusive NOR ko dekhe, ye ek simple function perform kar rahe, detecting similar inputs or dissimilar inputs. So, in ko agar aap uh, circuit ya combination circuit banai, to usme you would require a combination of OR gate and gates and inverters. Now, since uh, this particular function is very commonly used in logic design, different circuits use these uh, type of functions. So instead of you having to implement exclusive OR function and exclusive NOR function by combining these different gates, uh, you can use an exclusive OR gate in fact or exclusive OR gate uh, available in the form of IC chips. Now exclusive OR gate and exclusive NOR gate are examples of simple functional devices. When you are working with digital logic design, when you are implementing different circuits, you would be implementing different circuits which are used routinely. For example, adder circuit hai, wo bahut sare combination circuits mein use hota hai. Comparator circuit ki humne baat ki, again different logic circuits use the comparator circuit. Isi tana odd parity generator circuit, again different uh, combination circuits would be using the odd parity generator circuit. Now, if you are going to be designing such circuits, then you do not need to uh, design the odd parity generator circuit or the adder circuit or the comparator circuit. In fact, you can find integrated circuits which implement these functions. So, such combination circuits are known as combinational devices or functional devices. Now, as I said, the most common uh, functional device which is used is the adder. So, let us start our discussion with the adder circuit. Let us start our discussion with adders. Now, in digital logic, you can implement adders, of course, which add two different numbers. Now, let me pose a question. If you have to add two numbers and both numbers are of one bit each, how many input bits would you require for the adder and how many output bits would you require for the adder? Basically, you are adding two single bit numbers. So, the input to the adder circuit should be two bits to represent the two numbers. Outputs kitne hone chahiye? Ek sum output hona chahiye, kyunke do bits ko ab add karenge to ek sum uh, output bit aayega. Ek carry out bhi hona chahiye because if you just remember, uh, when you add 1 and 1, the answer is the sum is 0 and the carry is generated. So, for a single bit adder, you would require a sum output and a carry output. Now, when you connect different adders together, then of course, they add the two numbers as well as the uh, uh, carry borrowed from the previous uh, number, previous two numbers. 
So your address circuit should have a third input. So it should have the two bits to represent the two numbers as well as the carry in. It should have two outputs, the carry out and the sum out. Now in combinational logic terminology, there are two type of adders, a half adder and a full adder. The half adder does not have the carry in input, whereas the full adder has the carry in input. So basically, dono agar half adder ko or full adder ko dekha jai, half adder ki do inputs hain or do outputs hain, full adder ki teen inputs hain or do outputs hain. Let us have a look at the functional diagram of a half adder and a full adder and let us see how we represent the two adders symbolically. The diagrams represent a full adder and a half adder. A single bit binary adder circuit basically adds two bits and a carry bit generated by the addition of least signif significant bits. The output of the single bit adder circuit generates a sum bit and a carry bit. An adder circuit that only has two bit input representing the two single bit numbers A and B and does not have the carry bit input from the least significant digits is regarded as a half adder. An adder circuit that has three inputs, two bits representing the two single bit numbers A and B and the third bit representing the carry in bit is regarded as a full adder. We have looked at the block diagrams representing the half adder and the full adder. Let us start our discussion with the half adder. How would we implement a half adder? Let us first look, uh, let us first have a look at the function diagram of a half adder. Now, as we have seen, the half adder has two inputs A and B. So, two inputs ke saath function diagram mein, function table mein, kitne columns honge? Do columns honge, representing the two numbers, two single bit numbers A and B. How many input combinations? Basically four combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Outputs kitne honge is function table mein basically do honge. Ek jo column hai it would represent the sum output and the other column would represent the carry output. Now let us first have a look at the sum output column. Now sum column mein kab 1 hoga. Basically uh, when the input is 0, 0 the output is the sum is 0. When the input is 0, 1 the sum output is 1. When the input is 1, 0 the sum output is 1 and when the inputs are 1 and 1 the sum is 0 right. So basically if you look at the sum column the function represented by the sum column is equivalent to the exclusive or gate function. So exclusive or gate ka agar function ab dekhe wo bhi yehi kaam kar raha hai jo sum output aapko de raha hai. So the sum output can be easily implemented using an exclusive or gate. Uh, the two inputs A and B would of course be connected to the input of the exclusive OR gate. Let us have a look at the carry out uh, of the function, uh, the carry out column of the function table. Basically carry out kab generate ho when both the inputs are ones. For all other input combinations the carry output is 0. So what is the Boolean expression representing the carry out function? Basically it should be A B or product of A B. So A B jo hai kaise implement karenge using an AND gate, a two input AND gate, unke dono inputs pe kya honge? The variable A, the number A and variable B, the number B. Let us have a look at the function table of a half adder, uh, the expressions, the sum expression and the carry out expression and the circuit representing the sum output and the carry out output. The half adder function table has four columns, two columns for the input and two columns for the output. The two input columns represent the two numbers A and B. The two output columns represent the two outputs sum and carry out. The two input columns have four combinations of inputs 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. The sum output shows the sum output of the half adder circuit. So the outputs are, some outputs are 0, 1, 1, 0 respectively. Similarly, the carry out column shows the carry out output of the half address circuit. The outputs are 0, 0, 0, 1 respectively for the four input combinations. Let us have a look at the Boolean expression representing the sum output. It can be directly derived from the function table. The expression is 
a bar b plus a b bar. Now, this expression is equivalent to a exclusive or b. Let us have a look at the expression representing the carry out of the carry out output of the half adder. From the function table, the carry out output of the half adder is represented by the expression a b. Let us have a look at the circuit. As we have mentioned before, the sum is represented by exclusive OR gate. The carry out output is represented by an AND gate. So, both the exclusive OR gate and the AND gate inputs are connected together and they are connected to the two numbers A and B. We have looked at the half header circuit, we have looked at the function table, the expressions representing the sum output and the carry output. We have also looked at the implementation of the sum output and the carry out output. The implementation is pretty straightforward, only two gates are used. Now, let us look at the full adder circuit. Full adder uh, circuit as we mentioned before has three inputs, the two numbers A and B and the carry in input. The outputs are the same as the half adder that is the sum output and the carry out output. Again, how do we implement the full adder? Let us have a look at the function table of a full adder. Kitne uh, input columns honge, kitne output columns honge. Basically, the full adder has three input pins, the two numbers as I have mentioned before and the carry n. Therefore, three columns representing the variables a, b and c, n. So, there are eight possible input combinations. Now, let us have a look at the eight input combinations and let us determine the sum output and the carry out output. Now, for a combination 0, 0, 0, the sum output has to be a 0. For the input combination 0, 0, 1, the sum output is 1. For the input combination 0, 1, 0, the sum output is again a 1. The input combination 0, 1, 1, the sum output is 0, the carry output is 1. The input combination 1, 0, 0, the sum output is 1, carry output is 0. Similarly, for the input combination 1 0 1, the sum output is 0, the carry out output is 1. And lastly, the input combination 1 1 1, what is the sum uh, output? It has to be a 1 and what is the carry output? It is again a 1. So, now we have two outputs for the sum output and the carry out output. Now, how do we implement the circuit? Basically, if you write out all the min terms representing the sum output, you can implement a circuit. Similarly, if you write out all the min terms representing the C out output pin, you can again implement the circuit. But the circuit uh, implemented using these min terms would be using more gates. So, let us simplify these expressions before implementing the circuit. So, let us have a look at the function diagram, the expressions representing the sum output and the carry output and the implementation of a full adder circuit. The function table for a full adder has three input columns and two output columns. The input columns have the variable a, b and carry n. a and b of course, represent the two input numbers and carry n represents the carry from the previous two numbers. The output has two columns, the sum represents the sum of two numbers and the carry. The carry out represents the carry generated when the two numbers along with the carry are added together. Now, let us determine the Boolean expression for the sum output. Now, if you look at the function table, the sum column has four min terms represented by a bar b bar c plus a bar b c bar plus a b bar c bar plus a b c. Now, this expression can be simplified or rewritten in the form a bar into b bar c plus b c bar plus a into b bar c bar plus b c. Now, b bar c plus b c bar represents the exclusive OR function between variables b and c. Similarly, the expression b bar c bar plus b c represents an exclusive NOR function between the variables b and c. So, the equation or the expression can be rewritten in the form a bar 
into exclusive or between B and C plus A into exclusive nor between B and C. Exclusive nor is represented by the plus uh, sign within a circle and a bar over the entire expression. Finally, the expression can be simplified to A exclusive or B exclusive or C. The carry out expression is represented by four min terms as can be seen in the function table. The four min terms are A bar B C plus A B bar C plus A B C bar plus A B C. The expression can be rewritten in the form C into A bar B plus A B bar plus A B into C bar plus C. C bar plus C simplifies to 1 applying the Boolean rules. The expression A bar B plus A B bar is represented by an exclusive OR function between variables A and B. Therefore, the expression simplifies to C into A exclusive OR B plus A B. Now, let us look at the full adder circuit implementation. The sum term is represented by the expression a exclusive or B exclusive or C. So, basically two exclusive OR gates are required. So, the first exclusive OR gate is connected to the inputs A and B. The output of this first exclusive OR gate is connected to the input of the second exclusive OR gate. The second input of the second exclusive OR gate is connected to the carry N. The output is of course, the sum of three inputs. The carry out expression is implemented using four gates, an exclusive OR gate, two AND gates and an OR gate. The term A exclusive OR B is represented by the first exclusive OR gate. The AND gate on the top does an OR AND operation between the output of the first exclusive OR gate and the carry N. Similarly, the second AND gate does an OR AND operation between the two inputs uh, a and B. The OR gate basically adds the two product terms to give the C out output. We have looked at the full adder, we have looked at the function diagram describing the operation or the behavior of a full adder. We have uh, looked at the two expressions, the sum expression and the carry out expression for the full adder and of course, we have looked at the implementation of a full adder. Now, can we implement a full adder using two half adders. Well, we can. Now, a half adder has two inputs. So, at any instant it can only add two numbers. It would generate an output. So, if you connect another half adder at the output of the first half adder and you provide or rather you connect carry n to the second input of the second half adder, what would be the sum output of the second half adder? Basically, it would sum the input A, the input B and the carry. Similarly, how can you obtain the carry out? Basically, the carry out of the first half adder is odd with the carry out of the second half adder. The output of the OR gate would give you the carry out. Let us have a look at a diagram which shows the uh, representation of a full adder using two half adders. Two half adders can be connected together to form a full adder. The first half adder is connected to the numbers A and B. The output of the first half adder generates the sum of two numbers A plus B. The carry out output generates the carry out by adding the two numbers A and B. The second half adder is connected to the first half adder. In fact, the sum output of the first half adder is connected to the input A of the second half adder. The carry n is connected to the second input uh, that is input B of the second half adder. What is the output of the second half adder? Basically, it is going to be the sum of variables A, B and the carry n. Let us have a look at the carry out of the second half adder. It is odd with the carry out of the first half adder. Now, what are the two terms? Carry out of the first half adder results in the term A B and the carry out of the second half adder results in the term 
A exclusive or B ended with C N. Now, if you add the two terms, you obtain A B plus C N ended with A exclusive or B, which represents the C out Boolean expression. We have seen the circuit diagram which shows the implementation of a full adder using two half adders. Now, a single bit full adder can only add two single bit numbers. I mean, it, it cannot perform some useful calculations. In order to perform some useful cal calculations, you need to have, let us say, a 4 bit full adder or an 8 bit full adder or a 16 bit full adder. So, that means you can add two 4 bit numbers, two 8 bit numbers or two 16 bit numbers. Now, how would you implement, let us say, a 4 bit full adder? Basically, if you have a single bit full adder and you combine four such full adders together, you would have a 4 bit parallel adder. We are just going to see the diagram representing a 4 bit full adder. Uh, basically, the C out, the carry out of the least significant full adder, least significant full adder would be adding the least significant two bits of the four bit number. So, A 0, B 0 represent the two least significant bits of numbers A and B. So, the least significant full adder would be adding bits A 0 and B 0. It would generate a sum output of S 0 and a carry out of C 1. Now, if this carry out is connected to the carry in of the next full adder which adds bits A 1 and B 1 the output of the second full adder would be S 1 and the carry out would be C 2. Similarly, the carry out of the second full adder is connected to the carry in of the third full adder and similarly, the carry out of the third full adder is connected to the carry in of the fourth uh, full adder. So, in this manner you can by connecting four different full adders together uh, implement a 4 bit parallel adder circuit. Let us have a look at the 4 bit parallel adder circuit. The least significant full adder which adds bits A 0 and B 0 is shown on the right. The sum output is of course, S 0. The carry in to this full adder is connected to 0 because there is no carry in to this particular full adder. The carry out from this full adder is connected to the carry in of the next full adder which adds bits A 1 and B 1. The sum is the sum output is S 1 the carry out which is C 2 is connected to the third uh, full adder. So, the third full adder basically adds bits A 2, B 2, C 2, the output is S 2 and it generates a carry out C 3. The fourth full adder adds bits A 3, B 3, C 3 and it results in a sum output of S 3 and a carry out which is also equal to C 4. We have seen the connection of four full adders to form a four bit parallel adder. You can similarly add or connect eight different full adders to form an eight bit full adder. You can connect 32 different full adders um, to form a 32 bit uh, a parallel adder. Now, we have a problem with this particular circuit. If you look at the carry output generated from one adder, it is connected to the carry in of the next adder. Now, let us suppose you have a 4 bit full adder uh, which we just saw. The carry out generated from the most significant full adder that is C 4. It would have to propagate all the way from the first full adder through the second full adder through the third full adder and ultimately through the fourth full adder. Now, let us suppose that the propagation delay for the for, for each full adder is 50 nanoseconds. So, how long would it take for C 4 to be valid? Basically, there are four full adders. So, the first full adder would delay the carry by 50 nanoseconds. The second full adder would again delay the carry out by another 50 nanoseconds. The third full adder would again delay the carry by another 50 nanoseconds and finally, the fourth full adder would delay the carry out by another 50 nanoseconds. So, if you have a 4 bit parallel adder, the carry out C 4 would be delayed by 200 nanoseconds. 
Now, let us assume that you have a 32 bit uh, uh, parallel adder. So, the, the propagation delay would be too long. You cannot uh, basically wait for the carry to be generated after such a long time. Digital circuits are quite fast. So, you have to find a solution to the delay. Now, this delay uh, happens because the carry has to propagate through all the gates. So, what is the solution? Let us have a look at the solution, but before we look at the solution, let us just revisit that 4 bit uh, full adder and let us see the propagation of the carry from the first full adder to the last full adder. Consider the 4 bit parallel adder, the, the 2 4 bit numbers A and B are applied simultaneously to the 8 inputs of the 4 bit parallel adder. Now, after a delay of 50 nanoseconds, C1 would be available. After another delay of 50 nanoseconds, C2 would be available. Again, after another delay of 50 nanoseconds, C3 would be available and after another 50 nanoseconds, C4 would be available. Although, the two numbers A and B are available, they have been applied to the inputs of the 4 bit uh, parallel adder but the carry since it propagates from the first adder to the second to the uh, third and ultimately to the fourth the carry out is not available until after delay of 200 nanoseconds. So, you have to devise a circuit which looks at the inputs of the 4 bit parallel adders and generates a carry. So, the carry does not need to propagate through the full adder. The propagation of the carry through the full uh, the 4 bit parallel adder is known as carry ripple. We have looked at the propagation of the carry bit through the 4 uh, uh, full adders. Now, if we have a 16 bit full adder, the propagation delay would be even more and similarly uh, with 32 bit full adder, the propagation delay would increase even further. Now, we cannot afford to have such long propagation delays due to that carry bit. What is the solution to this? Basically, we need to have a circuit which looks at the inputs and predicts the value of the carry which can be used by the full adder circuit. Now, the look at carry generator circuit needs to be implemented. So, on what basis it is going to be implemented? How does it look at the two inputs or multiple inputs and generates a carry? Let us have a look at the look ahead carry generator circuit. Consider the full adder circuit shown. The term P represents the carry propagate. The term G represents the carry generate. The carry output is going to be 1 if the term G is equal to 1 regardless of C n. Looking at the circuit, the sum expression can be represented in terms of P and C. So, the sum expression is P exclusive or C where C is the C n or the carry n. The carry out can be represented in terms of C p and g where C is C n. So, the carry out is represented by the product term C n into carry propagate plus the carry generate. Now, let us develop expressions for carry 1 output, carry 2 output, carry 3 output and carry 4 output. Carry 1 output is based on the carry input to the first full adder, the uh, carry propagate term and the carry generate term. So, C 1 is equal to the product between C naught and P naught plus G naught. Similarly, carry 2 is represented by the expression C 1 ended with P 1 plus G 1. C 1 can be represented by the expression C naught P naught plus G naught. So, the expression for carry 2 simplifies to G 1 plus P 1 G naught plus P naught P 1 C naught. Similarly, the expression for carry 3 C 3 is represented by the terms C 2 P 2 plus G 2. Carry 2 has the expression G 1 P 1 G naught plus P naught P 1 C naught. So, the expression for C 3 becomes G 2 plus P 2 G 1 plus P 1 P 2 G naught plus P naught P 1 P 2 C naught. Similarly, 
the expression for carry 4 is g 3 plus p 3 g 2 plus p 2 p 3 g 1 plus p 1 p 2 p 3 g naught plus p naught p 1 p 2 p 3 and c naught. In all cases the carry propagate term is represented by the exclusive or operation between the term a and b the two numbers and the carry generate term is represented by the and operation between the two numbers. So, g 1 would be a 1 b 1 and similarly p 1 would be a 1 exclusive or b 1. Let us have a look at the implementation of the look ahead carry generator circuit. It is shown along with the uh, remaining part of the full error circuit. The inputs to the look ahead carry generator circuit are the carry propagate terms P naught, P 1, P 2 and P 3 and carry generate terms G naught, G 1, G 2 and G 3. The carry propagate and carry generate terms are generated by the exclusive OR and NAND gates after one gate delay. The outputs of the look ahead carry generator circuit are C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4. The output C 1 is generated by the circuit represented by the expression C 1 equals to C naught P naught plus G naught, which requires an AND gate to generate the product term C naught P naught and a second level 2 input OR gate to sum the terms C naught P naught and G naught. Thus, C 1 is available after 2 gate delays within the look ahead carry circuit. Similarly, the output C 2 is generated by the circuit represented by the expression C 2 equals to G 1 plus P 1 G naught plus P naught P 1 C naught, which requires a 2 input and a 3 input AND gate to generate the product terms P 1 G naught and P naught P 1 G naught, which requires a 2 input and 3 input AND gates to generate the product terms P 1 G naught and P naught P 1 C naught respectively. A second level 3 input OR gate is required to sum the 3 terms. Thus, C 2 is available after 2 gate delays within the look ahead carry circuit. The output C 3 is generated by the circuit represented by the expression C 3 equals to G 2 plus P 2 G 1 plus P 1 P 2 G naught plus P naught P 1 P 2 C naught. The expression is implemented by a combination of 3 AND gates having 2, 3 and 4 inputs respectively and a single 4 input OR gate. Again, 2 levels of gates are used. C 3 is available after a gate delay of 2. Finally, the output C 4 is generated by the circuit represented by the expression C 4 equals to G 3 plus P 3 G 2 plus P 2 P 3 G 1 plus P 1, P 2, P 3, G naught plus P naught, P 1, P 2, P 3, C naught. To implement the expression 2 levels of 2, 3, 4 and 5 input AND gates and a single 5 input OR gate is used. C 4 is available after a gate delay of 2. Thus, for carry outputs C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4, the delay is of the order of 2 after the proper gate carry and generate carry terms become available. We have looked at the implementation of the uh, look ahead carry generator. Basically, we implemented this look ahead carry generator for a 4 bit uh, 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 parallel binary adder. The expressions we derive were for C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4. As you have seen, the expressions are based on the carry generate terms and the carry propagate terms. Now, to implement these uh, expressions within the look ahead carry generator, you need two levels of gates, the AND gates which generate the product terms and the OR gate which sum these product terms. So, the output of the look ahead carry generator is available after a gate delay of 2. So, as you can see, if you have this look ahead carry generator, the propagation delay is reduced considerably and it is constant for all the bits. Uh, you have a 16 bit um, full address circuit, then all the 16 bit full address would generate a carry after a gate delay of 2. The 4 bit full address are practically uh, available in the form of integrated circuits 
there are two types available the 74 LS283 uh, and the 74 LS83A. Both these integrated circuits have the same functionality, but they are pin incompatible. Now, both these chips are 16 pin integrated circuits, uh, 4 pins are used for the input number A, the remaining 4 pins are used for the number B. You have 4 outputs to represent the 4 bit sum output, you have a carry in pin and a carry out pin. So, this sums up to 14 pins. You have a pin for the power supply and you have a pin for the ground. So, now you can connect uh, these 4 bit parallel adders to form 8 bit parallel adders, 12 bit parallel adders and 16 bit parallel adders. How would you connect them? Basically, you would connect the carry out pin of the first full adder to the carry in pin of the next full adder and similarly the carry out pin of the next full adder to the carry in pin of the third full adder. So, in this way you would be implementing a 12 bit full adder circuit. Now, the carry in pin of the first full adder would be connected to ground because there is no carry to the least significant two bits. Let us have a look at the implementation of a 12 bit uh, uh, parallel binary adder using the integrated circuits which we have just discussed. Uh, three integrated circuits would be uh, used, they would be uh, connected together. So, the first IC has its C in or the carry in connected to 0, the carry out of the uh, first IC is connected to the carry input of the second chip. Similarly, the carry out of the second chip is connected to the carry in of the third uh, chip. Uh, so, let us have a look at uh, the uh, 12 bit binary adder. The 12 bit parallel adder is implemented using 374LS283 chips. The first 4 bit adder chip on the extreme right is used to add bits 0 to 3, the least significant 4 bits of the two 12 bit numbers. The second 4 bit adder chip in the middle is used to add bits 4 to 7, the next most significant bits of the two 12 bit numbers. Finally, the third 4 bit adder chip on the extreme left is used to add the most significant bits 8 to 11 of the 12 bit numbers. Similarly, the 4 bit adder chip on the extreme right generates least significant sum outputs 0 to 3. The second 4 bit adder chip generates sum outputs for the bits 4 to 7. The third 4 bit adder chip on the extreme left generates the sum outputs for the most significant bits 8 to 11. The carry out is generated by the leftmost 4 bit adder, it is shown as C12. Similarly, the carry in is shown connected to the rightmost 4 bit adder, it is represented by C0. Carry out of the first 4 bit adder on the extreme right is connected to the carry in of the 4 bit adder in the middle, it is represented as C4. Similarly, the carry out of the middle 4 bit adder is connected to the carry in of the 4 bit adder on the extreme left, it is represented by C8. A 16 bit adder or adders having uh, 24 bits or 32 bits can similarly be implemented by connecting more 4 bit adders. We have looked at the implementation of a 4 bit uh, parallel adder using the commercially available uh, 74LS283 chips. Now, in today's lecture, we basically looked at the adder functional unit. We started with the half adder, then we uh, looked at the full adder. We dono adders ki function diagrams banayi thi, expressions derived ki thi aur implement kiya tha. Then we said that a single bit full adder cannot do any useful work. So, what do we do? We need to combine such full adders uh, to form a parallel adder. The parallel adder bana tha, then we said the, the carry has to propagate through the four parallel uh, full adders that is going to delay the carry. So, what is the solution to that? Basically, we said we need to generate a carry based on the inputs applied at the full adder circuit. So, we have a look ahead carry generator circuit which generate ca uh, generates a carries which are delayed by um, a factor of 2. Finally, we looked at the MSI uh, chips commercially available. Again, as we have just uh, looked at an example, we can connect different chips together to form a 12 bit adder. We are going to stop for today. 
in the next lecture we would be looking at some more functional devices inshallah next lecture mein dobara milenge apna khayal rakhiyega khuda hafiz and assalam alaikum